Ah, man, am I ever excited to see what's gonna happen with Minecraft Live this year? Ain't no way the Armadillo won. That was totally rigged. That's it? They showed like a negative amount of features. Why didn't they announce Minecraft 2, man? Come on! What the f- Minecraft's community is reaching its final straw, and I want to be the one to personally welcome you to the absolutely incredible and wholesome world that we find ourselves in, where we all strive off of aggressive criticism, death threats due to differing opinions, literal war propaganda for a cringe block game, and this. Okay, how the hell did we get here? Minecraft's been going on a slow decline for a bit longer than I think a lot of people realize, with a lot of the main criticism happening during the beginning of Minecraft Lives themselves. Minecraft Live 2020. I'm just gonna ignore this annoying bald bat. You see, this was the first year that Minecraft decided to scrap the Minecon lives and swap it with something else due to some mildly annoying circumstances, and announced one of the coolest updates that people would be insanely excited for in Caves and Cliffs coming next year! And the year after that. And, yep, then one more year after that. And you know what? While we're at it, just get rid of that and put this in instead. I'm sure no one cared about the fireflies anyway. They're just a weird little bug. I would probably consider this the main catalyst in the community's frustration that we see in the present day. And it encapsulated a lot of the main anger points we see in the community that we'll delve into shortly. These Minecraft lives would continue on annually, getting just more and more criticized by the second. Or year, I guess. Minecraft Live 2021 had another mob vote with some okay mobs, but there was clearly an obvious winner here. <laughs> okay, maybe let's just change up how that works a little bit, yeah. At least next year's mob vote wasn't as controversial. Just some people with wrong opinions, but there can't be anything for people to get mad at. <laughs> the sniffer? More like the stupid dumb idiot! <sighs> okay, yep. Yeah, if there's one thing the Minecraft community can do well, it's complain. But honestly, these complaints were a little bit justified because Minecraft Live 2022 was considered pretty underwhelming and it didn't have enough content for the majority of players. Like, all they did announce was a horse in cursive, book, and a new wood. But thankfully this wasn't actually everything in the update, and 1.20 did bring many more things for players to actually interact with and go explore to try to find. But I think that the sour taste that got put into people's mouths originally really didn't help as it still got considered very underwhelming by the majority of people. Oh, <laughs> this doesn't even take into account though the nerfs that came to villagers and netherite that got added to make the game a bit more challenging. But to a lot of people, it simply put, made the game feel fucking annoying. And I actually talk about that a bit more in one of my other videos if you want to go check that out. So after all these criticisms and opportunities to learn, Minecraft 2023 would have to come in with a bang. Mojang had learned from their prior mistakes and would create the perfect Minecraft Live. No way you actually almost believed that the third time, right? Minecraft Live 2023 has been the tipping point for the community, as we've seen controversy not only with the mob vote, but also with the features this year. We know that people People were underwhelmed with the amount of stuff that was announced last year with Minecraft Live, so what they decided to do this time was say, well, we want to do the same approach this year as well. I really love that change. Wait, what? What? <laughs> what? I. I can't say I understand that interesting choice, but okay. At least we got announced things like the trial chambers, auto crafting, and. Blow boy? Why did I write this in my screen? <laughs> but that's not even the main entree, so let's get into that. The Minecraft Mob Vote 2023 has been an absolute disaster. This year, I'd say we had three pretty solid options. We had Grabby Boy, Stupid Idiot Dumb Piece of Shit, and Hashtag Justice for the Penguin. And out of the three, it seemed like the sentiment was that the crab was going to win, given the various community polls that we've seen, if there even was going to be a mob vote. Because recalling back to earlier, many people from the community just wanted to completely discard the mob vote, and instead of only having one of them come in, we can have all three of them at once. Sounds great, right? I don't know how realistic it is, but I'm not a producer of the game, so I cannot speak on that. But it was very easy to see that a lot of people really wanted this to happen. W why is he playing Crossy Roads on a Minecraft petition? And with all of those efforts falling flat, the mod vote would still carry on and would have a winner of... Well, I think my reaction sums it up pretty well. Guys, are you... 
prizes. <laughs> all my How? Allegations start coming up that the mob vote is rigged because the crab didn't win. Everyone was getting absolutely enraged. Twitter becoming a. No, well, actually, it usually looks pretty bad. Minecraft's community was at an all time low. But. Is this really Mojang's fault? Let's take a second to take some deep breaths. Are people actually being reasonably upset? Or is this just unnecessary harassment that really can't be helped? Nah, it's their fault. All right, let's get real. The biggest thing that you'll hear from the community is that people think Mojang are lazy and argue that mod developers can create insane mods that are even more elaborate than the official updates in less time. And yes, while this is technically true, I think it's a little bit more complex than just saying Mojang is lazy and being done with it. A lot of the info I got for this is off of a Jet Starfish video, so please go check that out if you haven't already. But in an extremely simplified and in the perspective of someone who doesn't know anything about funny character lines, these updates have to be adapted to multiple versions, and considering both Java and Bedrock have entirely different engines, it makes things a little bit more complicated than just idea, right, and done. But I guess you could also argue that Microsoft and Mojang would have a much bigger budget with a way bigger team, considering Minecraft is one of the biggest games of all time. And to that, I will inform you, y yeah, you know what, That that's actually kind of true. I, I think they put more budget into Jeb's hair CGI than the actual update. <laughs> what? The only answer I could have for that is a lot of the resources that are actually used for Minecraft are used for more of the parody games like Minecraft Dungeons or Minecraft Legends, which I, I don't know if it's a profit, but you know what, they're probably still making people do that. But overall, I think that it's extremely unfair to blame everything on Mojang. There definitely needs to be some changes in how things are handled and marketed in my opinion. I'd much rather see more of the effort go into the actual game rather than just some random projects that bear the Minecraft name. But going as far as to say that Mojang is lazy, I don't think it's that simple. Oh god, the game is doomed! Everyone's mad and no one's ever gonna play Minecraft again! Okay, this probably isn't going to happen. I think that's being a little bit too pessimistic. Something important to consider in aspects of genres, personalities, really anything on the internet, is shelf life and oversaturation. We've already mentioned that Minecraft is the biggest game of all time, and it's been around for a little bit now. And Mojang attempting to keep the simplicity in Minecraft whilst innovating it to make it feel fresh and new is starting to get more and more difficult. It's inevitable for things to lose popularity as time goes on, but ever since the resurgence with the PewDiePie era, the controversies have been getting more and more stacked up and causing the game to start declining faster without the ability to gain ground again. Less new content in the most recent updates stacked with an overwhelming oversaturation of Minecraft content, which is one of the main reasons why Minecraft blew up in the first place with YouTube. It creates an environment where people aren't given enough to experiment with, and creates an even more difficult environment to create content. Minecraft has been slowly trending downward over time, and the final breaking point is beginning to look closer than further away. But it doesn't have to be this way. Ironically enough, when the mob votes do come around, the game becomes the most talked about in the entire year. I'll have people who never even touch Minecraft asking me about the mob vote. If people could just, you know, not start a war with an entire company during it, there's actually big growth that comes from it. And just take a second to think. Do you view Minecraft as it is now in the present, or do you wish that it was more like it was in the past? We've had such high highs with Minecraft, like back when it was in its original prime, or once the Nether update released, that anything that gets released nowadays gets compared to its predecessors, which gives people a jaded perception of thinking everything will always be better than what there once was, when in reality, these kind of things just go in waves. Conversations and criticism are necessary for the growth of anything, but once it becomes less constructive and more destructive, we begin to lose the growth aspect and get a hate train that gets a bunch of people to jump onto it. We're all here for the same reason, right? The game being successful and making us all satisfied is the ultimate goal, so this pessimistic mindset and 
Seeing the worst in every decision that's being made is not helping our situation. The past should remain the past. And I'll keep mentioning this that, of course, Mojang does still need to take some level of responsibility. There are definitely some things that do need to change. But at the end of the day, they are people. It would be very naive to think everything is just always going to be sunshine and rainbows a thousand percent of the time. But one way you can look at it is whenever there's rain, you can always expect sunshine. Okay, that was cringe. The bad won't always last forever. The journey isn't gonna be a straight line, it's gonna be in waves of going up and down. So yeah, we may have reached the final straw, but it's time to use this as a marker of unity instead of war. We're the biggest game and community for a reason. So go get your armor, get your sword, and just go enjoy the game. And with that being said, Minecraft Live 2024 will announce the sex update!